to launch Geoda, we double click on the icon Geoda and then it generates a floating toolbar that you can see right here. Once you see the Geoda toolbar, you just um, the next step is either to open an existing project or create a new project. So we say file, new project, and we know that our data set is in shapefile, so we say Esri shapefile, and then it will point to the directory where you have the data set and then click on the file and say open and right away Geoda will open the the map that is associated with the uh, with the shape file you can see the map is right there um, you can you can pan or you can say okay I wanna um, select the panning mode you can move this map here and there or you can say I want to zoom into this mode of the map and I want to look at it closely so I'm going to zoom into the city of Toronto so this is Steeles Avenue north of it is uh, south of it is Toronto north of it is York if I go down here you follow the cursor to the left is Mississauga to the right is city of Toronto this is Lake Ontario and here to the left is city of Toronto or Scarborough to be precise and to the right are the eastern municipalities and this is the, the, the lay of the land here. This is the city of Toronto, and, you know, Blower would be somewhere here. This is Highway 407. Young Street is literally running uh, vertically like this. So first thing you want to know is how data um, are related to this map. There's a data set that looks like a spreadsheet. So you click on this button here, which looks like a spreadsheet, and then the data shows up. So you could see that there's a unique ID, the area, the census track ID, the CMA is of Toronto, which is 535, province is 35, which is Ontario. CMA name is Toronto, so it won't change at all. CSD is the municipality, so you have Vaughan and King and others. And then you have other variables. So population 2006 um, was how many people lived in this municipality, what percentage drove, what percentage uh, took public transit, and what percentage took non-motorized modes such as walking and biking and so on and so forth from a real estate perspective how many uh, housing units were there which is total dwelling occupied which is this variable how many average rooms and bedrooms and so on and so forth and if i were to select some variables so i press shift and and i want to select um, let's say uh, these records um, i can actually go back and look at the map so i say zoom uh, zooming mode and actually there must be um, fit to window mode and you can see that the the um, the records that I selected here you could see them here those same records are actually selected here as well and so anything that I select in either the table or in the map it gets reciprocity reciprocally selected in the other um, window as well you could see that there are thousand and three census tracts and if I were to really zoom in to um, uh, show you one particular census tract and I'm going to zoom in here so you could see that there are some large and then very small census tracts. Each polygon is a census tract. And there are 1,003 of those in this data set. So I will first zoom out uh, and I will say fit to the um, window mode. I right click and click on fit to window mode and I'm looking at the entire data set. I clicked anywhere in the, in the uh, window and then it deselects. And I want to first show you how the population is distribution distributed. So I say map, thematic maps, and so I can have a quantile map. I can have uh, five quantiles, so each bin would have 20% of the observations. I could have a percentile map, and it could uh, look at 1 to 10, 10 to 50, and so on and so forth. And there are these box maps, which are, again, statistical ways of distributing the data into certain bins, and then the standard deviation map. So let's just start with quantile map. We want five boxes or five bins where each bin has the same number of census tracts in them. So five would, be, would do that for us. And let's say we want to look at the total population in 2006. I click that and I say OK. And right away it creates a new map. And I would bring it here, make it slightly big, and you could see how the new map looks like. And you have two things happening. You have two windows within this window. You have on the left a window showing how many um, what are the values in each bin so the lighter color are less population and the darker shades are more population and then you look at the map and you could see there's a distribution um, it will make more sense if we zoom into it so let me zoom into it here and see here's a lot of population but then you also see that the size of the track is very big so 
basically if you are looking at count data number of people living in uh, a zone or number of people number of houses in a zone or single family detached homes the bigger the census tract the more people will be there you wouldn't be able to know the concentration of it so as many people live here as they live in these small zones here right so you could see that there's a different distribution but then we have to normalize it, normalize it by the size so one way of doing it is to, in fact, look at population density. So let's do that. So in our data set, we have this variable called pop density, pop dense hectare and pop dense square. This is population density in squares of kilometers. So I want to have a, a thematic map of this variable. So I go back and I say map. And this time, instead of quantile map, I'll take a percentile map. And I will look for that variable pop density. Um, I have to scroll down here. And then I say OK, and it generates that map. And now let me just make it a little big so that we can look at it. And now um, this map is fairly interesting. Um, first of all, you notice that now instead of giving you the actual values of density, it's telling you that um, the blue, dark blues uh, are the uh, census tracts where they have, uh, they belong to less than 1% of the, in terms of population density. Uh, so very low population density and these are the census tracts which are colored red that are the highest density right and then uh, as the shade turns from blue to red uh, the population density increases but you don't see the actual range of values for population density but you see how the distribution is and I can again zoom in and um, I can go and look for a, take a closer look and you could see now that remember that that big um, neighborhood in, in Scarborough that I showed had a lot of population but in terms of population density it has one of the lowest population densities and these are the census tracts right in downtown Toronto that have one of the highest population densities so another thing you notice that the we are looking at the quantile map we have five quantiles and the colors are here um, but you notice that the um, the the density is, is represented in um, a a mathematical notation like you know 1.84 times 10 to the power 3 uh, which is basically saying something like you know 1840 persons per square kilometer it would be better that if you just look at it from a from a regular uh, not this mathematical notation but something that can easily be understood so we say right click change current map type and then we go for natural breaks and we say we want natural five breaks and then we get the, the, almost the same distribution not equally distributed but then you know it is based on how data would be naturally truncated into various categories so see the highest category is just five census tract the lowest category is 513 census tract but now we actually see the range. So the first one is range from 0 to 3,864 persons per square kilometer. This one would be 16,084 persons per square kilometer to 30,053 persons per square kilometer. It still adds a decimal point which is meaningless because there's no reason to be that precise here. Um, it could have been generic. I hope they, I, I wish they had a way to do this. Um, there's a legend background color, copy legend to clipboard, but it's not offering us to change the display of this. If I were to look at the entire map, I say fit to window, and you could see now there's a you know there was a reason that natural break, break looked like the way it did. Um, if I were to go back to panning mode so that I can move these things around, and here we go, you could see that you know the, the, most of the city is low density, and and then um, the highest densities are here. Uh, in in the central parts of the city this is young street this is the western downtown king west and queen west area all the way up to Bloor, and and and, and you could see this is the, the the go train line coming in and heading to the airport this is your airport here um, so the other thing is if we were to go back and say um, change the current map type to back let's say back to quantile and say five we again lose that thing and we get a special different spatial distribution Maybe a little bit more interesting, but it's very hard to understand this. Now, the other thing is, let's assume that you didn't have this variable called population density, which is basically number of people living in a census tract divided by the area of the census tract. And we have to create a new variable, what to do about it. So we go back here, we say table, and then within table, we say variable calculation. Um, and within variable calculation, we click on variable calculation. And we know we're going to be using two variables, so we click on bivariate. Let me just drag this down now bivariate and uh, let's say add a new variable and we call my pop density right 
So because we're just creating this, I'm going to keep it real um, and I'll put it before ID so that, or maybe after, oh yeah, let's put it before ID so that um, it's right in the beginning of the uh, data set. Add, and then I say population 2006, add, subtract, divide by area. Area is right here. And it just spells out this uh, population 2006 divided by area. So this is our population density variable. I say apply and close. And now I go back to the data set. And lo and behold, this new variable should be there. And it is. And I can go back and say map. And I say quantile map and five. And this time around, I create my pop dense map. Here we go. Uh, bring it back. You can see that we have created our own new variable and we have mapped it successfully. This concludes our first video.